Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all keeping well. My name's Liz and this is Talking History. So last week I covered the anarchy. This week we're going to take a little trip back to Scotland and delve into the story of King David I of Scotland. And if he is someone you are interested in, please do stay tuned. <laughs> David was born in 1084 and he was the youngest son born to Malcolm III of Scotland and Margaret of Wessex. And David joined his brothers in leaving Scotland for their own safety to Northern England in 1093 when their parents died within days of each other. And their uncle, Donald, seized the throne for himself, becoming Donald III. In 1097, um, Donald III was succeeded by David's older brothers, Edgar and then Alexander. Now, on Edgar's deathbed, he insisted that Alexander allowed David to govern the lowlands of Scotland. Now, David gave himself the title Prince of the Cumbrian region from 1113. David, he resided with his brother-in-law, King Henry I of England, and Henry had also arranged David's marriage to the widow Countess Maud de Senseless, who was a great niece of William the Conqueror in 1114. Now, through the marriage, David acquired the immensely rich earldom of Huntingdon with its large estates of Northamptonshire and Bedfordshire. David and Maud, they had one son together named Henry, uh, who was born in 1115. Now, Henry would become the Earl of Northumberland, but Henry died in 1152, just a year before his father's death of natural causes. During the 1120s, David had participated in medieval tournaments in northern France, and he was now a thoroughly European noble in both outlook and in habits. David's brother Alexander died in 1124 without any legitimate heirs. And David was declared king on the 25th of April. And he was the first Scottish king to bear that name. Alexander had one illegitimate son named Malcolm and he rebelled twice, firstly in 1125 and he was defeated by David's, David's supporters, then again in 1130 with the support of Angus, the ruler of the Moray region. And he, Angus, was also a descendant of Macbeth, the Scottish king, as in Shakespeare's Macbeth. David wasn't in Scotland at that time, but his constable was. So he raised an army, raised and led an army and defeated them both on the battlefield. Angus was killed and Malcolm was imprisoned at Roxburgh Castle. And now David's throne was finally secure. David had invited many English, Norman and Flemish nobles to reside in the southern part of his kingdom in exchange that they gave military service for the large estates. Some resided in David's newly created um, royal borough where special privileges were given to encourage growth in trade, particularly in wool and hides. Some of those that arrived would become important to Scotland's future. They included the Comwens, the Bruces and the Stuarts. The Knights Templar was also given base at Ballantradoch. I hope I pronounced that right. Apologies to anyone from Scotland. I really hope I pronounced that right in Midlothian. 
Scotland had also been enjoying a peaceful relationship with England as they had been tied when David's sister Matilda had married Henry I and his older brother Alexander had married David's illegitimate daughter Sibella. However, when Henry died in 1135, he left no legitimate male heir, only his daughter, Empress Matilda, who was now Henry's nominated successor. And she was not to the liking of many powerful barons who had preferred Matilda's cousin, Stephen, who was one of the wealthiest men in England at that time. David had supported his niece, Empress Matilda, as he had made a promise to Henry. Although Stephen was married to Matilda of Boulogne, who was also a niece of David's, Stephen was crowned King of England and the anarchy began. But David, much like many other barons and nobles and everything else, he took full advantage of the anarchy. He invaded northern England where he captured the great castles of Carlisle and N Newcastle. And he laid siege to the mighty Durham Castle. Now, King Stephen, he led an army to the north in February 1136. David chose to settle. He gave up Newcastle, but kept control of Carlisle. Now, David's son, Henry, kept the title that he had once held for himself, the Earl of Huntingdon. In 1138, David sent an army to ravage northern England for a second time. The Scottish king took the counties of Westmoreland, Cumberland and Northumberland. Now, David took control of more castles as his army plundered through the countryside and he rounded up women, taking them as slaves. Stephen, though he enjoyed victory not near North Allerton in Yorkshire at the Battle of Standard on the 24th, 22nd of August in 1138, and David had control of Northern England as far as the River Tees by the 1140s. David knighted Henry of Anjou or Henry Plantagenet in May 1149, the son of Empress Matilda and future King of England, Henry II, at Carlisle. Henry made a promise to maintain the status quo with Scotland should he become King of England. And Henry had joined forces with David to attack England once again. David even attempted to take York into his kingdom in 1149, but he had failed. And after that, the border was pushed back northwards. In the later years, David enjoyed spending a lot of his time in his gardens in Edinburgh and Carlisle, which Carlisle had became his main seat of government. King David I of Scotland died on the 24th of May 1153, aged around 69. He was buried at Dunfermline and David had died without any living son. He had two daughters, Clarissa and Hardinia. I think, I'm hoping I pronounced those right. David had wished for his 12-year-old grandson, Malcolm, who was the son of the late Henry, Earl of Northumberland, becoming Malcolm IV of Scotland. Unfortunately, Malcolm was no match for the new English king, Henry II. Malcolm gave up all of the territorial gains that David had made during his reign. Malcolm IV reigned for 12 troublesome years and his reign ended abruptly in 1165 when he died suddenly. Malcolm died childless, so Malcolm's brother William became the next King of Scotland. William would become known as William the Lion. And there's David's story. A short video for today, 
just to tide us over because the build and up to Empress Matilda, don't worry. And I do have a few more videos planned. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit longer. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you for your continued support. I really, really appreciate it. It means so, so much. So keep being amazing. Keep, no, everyone, please, well, just keep subscribing and, and liking and sharing and just keep doing all the good stuff because you are all amazing. Anyway, until then, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.